Section 7.3 of Young and Friedman's University Physics finally gets to the law of the conservation of energy. This is a core law of physics to which there is no known exception. Here it is in Young and Friedman's own words, energy is never created or destroyed, it only changes form. There you have it, the law of conservation of energy, one of the very few laws of physics for which there has never been a exception found or a shadow of a doubt whether it was true or not. To go into a little more detail, there are conservative forces and there are non-conservative forces. At this point in Young and Friedman's book, uh, in chapter 7, he's just talked about two kinds of conservative forces, gravitational forces and elastic forces. When we say they're conservative, we're saying that, you know, if you move if you move a, the position of something in relation to gravity, um, you can, you can uh, move it down, you can move it up, and as you move it up and as you move it down, the potential energy will increase or decrease, uh, increase as you move it up, decrease as you move it down. But um, if you move it back up, its potential energy goes right back to the amount of potential energy it had when it was at that height before. Gravitational energy is a, is a conservative force in and of itself. Um, there are four characteristics that uh, Young and Friedman say are necessary for something to be a conservative force. The first is that the work done by the force uh, needs to be able to be dis expressed as the difference between the initial and final values of a potential energy function. That is to say that the work done by a conservative force needs to be um, entirely captured by the difference in potential energy. If if there's energy being dissipated in some way other than that, uh, then it's not a conservative force because then you know you you, ha you can't get the potential energy back, which gets us to the second uh, characteristic of a conservative force: the work done needs to be reversible. So when you're holding a rock at one meter from the ground, it has a certain potential energy. If you move it down to a half a meter from the ground, it has lost its potential energy, uh, but you can move the rock back up to one meter uh, and it will have the same amount of potential energy that it had um, uh, the previous time. So the second characteristic is that the work done needs to be reversible. Thirdly, the work done cannot depend on the path taken, only on the starting and ending points. Let's say that I'm going to go jogging uh, on a trail through the woods that goes up and down and up and down and up and down um, but um, the thing is it doesn't matter uh, the potential energy at the starting point is going to be e exactly the same uh, as the ending point if I end at the same spot uh, regardless of the fact that I've gone up and down and up and down because I'm going to come right back to the same gravitational point and thus have the same potential energy at the end of it um, and finally, as I, in the example I just said, when the starting and ending points are the same, the total work is zero. Uh, so there's zero difference in potential energy if I run on that trail up and down and up and down and come right back to the same spot where I started. My potential energy is, is exactly the same um, when I finish as when I began, and the, the, the net work done is therefore uh, zero. So those are the, uh, the criteria for a conservative force. A conservative force whose uh, potential energy is going to be um, uh, reversible and, and the same at the end and the beginning uh, uh, if I come back to the same starting point. And at this point in Chapter 7, a Young and Freeman have given two kinds of uh, forces uh, that are, are uh, conservative. One is the gravitational force and the second is the elastic, uh, elastic force. A third force later in the book that's conservative is, is electric uh, force, is a conservative force. There are, of course, non-conservative forces, and non-conservative forces are forces where you have a loss of uh, energy and you can't get the, um, you can't get the uh, potential energy back because you've lost uh, some of the, the energy. So when friction is involved, uh, some of the energy is lost as heat. Uh, what is sometimes uh, what Young and Freeman call internal energy. Uh, mechanical energy uh, tends to lose um, 
uh, energy in heat and friction and and so forth. Um, so where mechanical energy is lost uh, in the process of a force exerting itself, that's that's called a dissipative force. Now you can actually gain uh, kinetic energy um, uh, in in non-conservative forces. So if you blow up a stick of dynamite, uh, there's more kinetic energy after it blows up uh, than there was before. But it's a non-reversible process. You can't get the the dynamite to suck back into itself and you know back into um, the stick. So non-conservative forces are 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 forces where you have some loss of energy uh, along the way, and and you just can't you can't get it back. It's not reversible. So to put the law of conser conservation of energy in a, a formulaic form, basically the law of conservation says that. Uh, the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy plus the change in internal uh, energy that is lost equals zero. Uh, this of course means that uh, if, if one of these goes up, one of them has to go down. Um, in a, um, the, uh, this, is, this works for both conservative and non-conservative forces. In the case of conservative forces, the internal energy is zero. Uh, and so it's a non-factor. Um, so in, a, in, a, in terms of a conservative uh, situation like gravity or a spring, uh, then as the change in kinetic energy goes up, uh, the uh, potential energy goes down, or when the potential energy goes up, the kinetic energy goes down. Um, so you have a, a, a positive for the one offset by a negative on the other, and it's e going to equal zero. In a non-conservative situation, you're going to lose some of that um, energy to heat or uh, some kind of internal energy force. So there you have it, the law of conservation of energy, one of the bedrock laws of physics.